Hey everyone, thanks for watching Bridge Quotes Products Lights. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you the basics on how to use RGB pixels in your light display. Now, I already made a video like this, but it was a year ago and I missed out some information. So I'm deciding to make it again and put in everything I forgot. So let's get right into it. I'm going to be answering questions like, what are RGB pixels, how do they work, how do I use them in my display, why should I use them over regular Christmas lights, and what to do if I need help. Now this video will not be able to get you started up on to run a display and it's not going to be able to cover everything or else it would be an hour long, but it will give you the basics on how these lights work so then you can go and watch some more advanced videos I have for each step so you can learn how to set up each step to get the whole show running. So first off, RGB pixels are the newest type of Christmas lights available today at the time of this video and they can do a lot of cool stuff. Each individual light can change any color, any time, up to 40 times a second or every 25 milliseconds. The way each light does that is each light or each pixel has a red light, a green light, and a blue light inside of it. You can turn on these different colors at different intensities to make different colors other than red, green, and blue, such as purple with just the red and blue on or white with all three of them on. Now these lights can be programmed to do a bunch of different patterns and the limit for them is your imagination. You can have this light flashing red while this light is fading yellow and this one is flashing between green and blue and the rest is all on white. You can have them doing anything you want at any time which makes them really cool. Now the way they do that is the lights need data and each individual pixel has its own microchip inside of it. So you send power and data to the lights and then the power powers the lights obviously and then the data tells the computer chip inside of it what color to turn on, how long to do it for, and other information like what intensity for each light. To get these lights working you need three things. You need a controller, you need a computer to tell the controller what to do, and then you need a computer to program the lights. Now you can use the same computer that you program the lights with to also tell the controller what to do. So the first step to getting these lights to work is you need to program them. And you can use any programming software you want that you can find. What I use is a program called X-Lights. It's 100% free, it has a lot of cool advanced features, and it's constantly being worked on by a team of developers to make the software better and to get rid of all the bugs in it. Some other cool things about this software is it allows you to add music to your program files, so if you want to synchronize the lights to music, you can do that. It allows you to upload a picture of your house and then you could draw the pixels or the lights on your house image so you can make it look however you want and then it allows you to see what your house will actually look like with the lights because you upload the picture and put them all on there. Plus the software is the most popular one used today so since there's a lot of people using it there are a lot of people that can help you if you have problems and there are a lot of good videos about it. I also have a video on it if you wanted to see how to use it completely. You could check it out right up here. It is three hours long, but it does go through every single setting and how to use it completely from start to finish. Now the next step in the process of getting these lights to work is you need a computer to tell the controller when to turn on the lights and the computer will hold your program files and send them to your controller right when you want the lights to turn on. You can use the same computer that you use to program the lights or you can use what's called a Raspberry Pi. That's not the type of Raspberry Pi I mean. This is a Raspberry Pi. What it basically is, is a computer all in this little board. It can be set up to run like a computer and you can also put special software on it to take the program files that you made on your computer so it can then send it to the controller. These cost around $80 by themselves or for about $100 if you get a kit with them. And I also have a video explaining how to set up the software on here, complete beginning to end. You can watch that video right up here. Now the video was made last year in August, but the settings still are the same for the software and they probably will stay the same for a year or two to come. 
because the software doesn't have any major updates for about that period of time. Now, if you were to add audio in your display, the audio would also come out of the Raspberry Pi because it has an audio jack right here. So you could send out the audio through here or also through the USB if you wanted to use USB audio, if you had a special adapter. I'm not gonna go over how to use audio completely in this video, but um, I don't have any complete videos explaining all of the parts in audio, but I do plan on making that soon. So now, you have made the program files for your lights, and you have uploaded them to whatever computer you wanna use, whether you're using a Raspberry Pi or the same computer you program the lights on, and now you need a controller to get the data from the computer to the lights. And this is my controller I have, it's called the F16 V3. It's from pixelcontroller.com, they're not a sponsor. And it is a really nice controller. Um, this it, You cannot buy this one anymore, it's the older version, they've come out with a V4 version. It's out of stock right now, but it should be in stock soon. And just to explain this quickly, what it does is it takes data through either one of these ethernet ports from the Raspberry Pi or whatever computer you're using through an ethernet cord, and then it changes it into pixel data, and you can plug in all of your pixels right here with different connectors. I have a video explaining how to use this board, which you could check out right here. The settings are still somewhat the same for the V4, but it is a little bit different, so it, the video might not work the best if you were to buy the V4 version of the controller. So now you know how to get data to the lights. You have the file from your computer, and then you've either kept it on that computer and used that as your main computer to run the lights, or you've uploaded it to a Raspberry Pi, and you have connected your Raspberry Pi or whatever computer to your controller, and then you have the lights receiving the data from the controller. But I haven't really talked about power yet, because these cannot take regular power like regular Christmas lights do. So in the US, all outlets output 120 volts AC, and then in most other countries, it's 240 volts AC. There are some other voltages, but these lights cannot run on any of those voltages. These lights take 12 volts DC. There are also some lights that take 5 volts too, and they work the same as this. They just need different voltage, but I have all 12 volt pixels, and I'll explain whether or not you should get 5 volts or 12 volts in a future video. So now you might be wondering how do you get the voltage from 120 volts AC or whatever you have in your outlet down to 12 or 5 volt DC for the lights. What you can use to do that is what's called a power supply. This is a 12 volt power supply from Wired Watts. They are also not a sponsor, but the way it works basically is you connect your power up through here through an extension cord that you screw into here and then it converts the power down to 12 volts DC and output it on the other terminals. You can also buy these for 5 volts DC if you're using 5 volt pixels. They do also have a switch on them, so if you're using 120 volts, you'd set it to 120 volts on here. The switch actually says 115 volts, but it's the same thing. And then it also says 230 volts, so you can switch the switch with a screwdriver if you're using 230 volts. So that's how you get data and power to the lights. And that's all you need, and then the lights should be working. You can also set up audio like you want, but that will be in a future video, like I said. And now I'll answer a few questions that are frequently asked. Um, the first one is, why should I use RGB pixels over regular Christmas lights? Well, number one, they're a lot cooler, so um, they do a lot of different patterns. With regular lights, you can only turn on the entire strand on or off one color. This can be any color, any bulb, any time, every 25 milliseconds. Second, all of these lights are LED. So that means that you'll be a lot happier when you take down your display and then you look at your energy bill. It won't be crazy high like with regular incandescent lights. They can take a lot of power. For my light show this year, which had 4,071 pixels, it only took seven amps of power. Whereas someone I know, they put up a bunch of Christmas lights for Christmas. They did not dance, they did not do anything special, they just stayed on and they're all regular lights, and that also took seven amps of power, not even doing anything special, whereas these took seven amps of power, there was 4,000 of them, and they could do a bunch of cool stuff. The third reason you should use these in your display, and this only applies if you're using music, most people use these lights anyway for their display, not a lot of people use regular Christmas lights anymore with music. Some people still do, but more people are switching to these because they're LED, and they can do all the cool patterns. So if you have a problem with these lights, there are a lot of people that can help you 
Whereas if you're having a problem with the regular Christmas lights or their controllers that they need because they can't use the same controllers as these, there are still people that can help you, but there probably isn't as many. And then my fourth reason, and this is my favorite reason, is because you can enter into X Lights Around the World every year if you wanted to. X Lights Around the World is basically a video at the end of every year showing everyone's light display that is synchronized to the song they're using. The way they figure out the song is we vote on it throughout the year and then we pick um, two songs, it's been two songs for the past two years. They use two songs and then you could sync your lights to the, either one of these two songs, make a video and then you could submit it to them and then you'd be in a giant video every year and you could see other people's display too. And I've entered the past two years and you could see my house here. Into the and here. Now if you're using regular Christmas lights, you can't enter because you have to be using X lights to enter and you can't really use X lights to program regular Christmas lights. But that is not a big reason. The biggest two reasons is because they save power and they look a lot cooler. And now one other thing that could be counted as a pro or a con, depending on how you look at it, is what happens if one of these lights go dead. So if a light goes dead on regular Christmas lights, it's harder to figure out which light is dead because it, the entire strand usually turns off. But it's somewhat easy to fix because you could just buy a new strand. Or you can go and look for the bulbs to try and find which one is blown. Whereas with these, it's easier to figure out which bulb is blown. But it's not as easy to fix these. So if a bulb dies, usually what happens is the microchip has a problem with it. And... Every light works up until that light. So let's say this pixel broke and the data is going this way. This light would light up, this light would light up, but this one would not. So that tells you that this one's broken. Now to fix it, you can replace the entire strand if you wanted to. But usually what you have to do, because it's in like a certain prop or something, is you have to cut the wires on each side of the pixel and then you have to solder in a new pixel. Keyword is solder, you have to solder them in, you have to heat shrink it, so that could be a little bit difficult. So you can consider that a pro or a con, however you look at it. I consider it a pro because then you know which light is the dead one because it doesn't turn off the entire strand. Another con to these is they are extremely expensive compared to regular Christmas lights. For 100 count of regular Christmas lights, let's say at Walmart, they're usually like 3 bucks, sometimes even cheaper if you buy them after Christmas. Now these, for a strand of 100, the cheapest I've found them is $25. And that's because each bulb has its own microchip, it takes a lot more to make these, they're, and they can be a lot more expensive. Um, I have found that if you buy them in bulk, you can get cheaper prices. Like if you buy over 5,000 of these on a certain website, you can get them for about $24 to $23 for $100. But usually they're around $27 for $100. So that is a list of the most important pros and cons of the lights. And now let's say you're setting up your lights, but then you need help. You can't figure out how to do something. You can't figure out why this isn't working. You have no idea what's going on. You've looked up all online. Nothing is helping you. Where can you go for help? So first off, I really love it when everyone leaves comments on my videos asking for questions. I like trying to help everyone and help them get their problems fixed, but I can't answer all of the questions. I've been getting a lot of questions lately and it's kind of hard because I'm still in school, so I have to do school and I have other stuff to do so I don't get time to answer the questions. So asking the question on my channel is probably not the best idea because I might not respond. I want to, but I'm so busy that I probably just can't. So there are a lot of other good places you can go to ask for help where there are a lot of experienced people that can help you. So my favorite place I go to is a website called Falcon Christmas. It is a form that's designed to help people with any problems they can have with uh, RGB pixels or their controllers or the computers if you're using the Raspberry Pi. They have uh, certain um, spots where you could put topics about that. For anything to do with smart pixel lights, all you have to do is make an account and then there's tons of helpful people on there. And I've asked questions on there and usually they're answered within that day or the next day. So that's my favorite place to go to, like I said, because there's a lot of support. You can answer or ask any question. You can even answer questions if you know them and people have asked them. 
So that's my favorite place to go. The second place is to go on Facebook because there are a ton of Facebook groups you can get on and ask questions there. They're not usually as open as Falcon Christmas. Falcon Christmas, you can ask questions about anything, like even the programming software. Usually on Facebook, you have to find a certain group, like there's an x Lights group, and then there's a Falcon Player group, and then there's like controller groups, and usually there's not a group with everything combined, but if you find the right ones, there are a lot of people on there that can help you for that too. So the second place I'd recommend is just looking on Facebook and looking for groups because there are a lot of people on there too that can help. And then finally, just look it up on YouTube or Google because sometimes you might get lucky and figure out the problem by looking it up on there because sometimes there are questions that are answered on there and stuff. So that is everything I do if you need help. First look on Falcon Christmas if for some reason no one can answer your question there, which is very rare for that to happen. Then maybe go on a Facebook group or something, and if all else fails, you can look it up on YouTube or Google. So that basically concludes the basics on how to use RGB pixels. They are really cool lights, and they can do a lot of patterns and a lot of cool stuff, but there is a lot of work, like I said. Now, with the information I gave you in this video, you cannot start with these. I did, There's still a lot of stuff you have to set up for these, but I am going to be making more basic videos on each individual topic so you can figure out how to do that. So thank you for watching. If you found this video to be helpful, I'd really be thankful if you could leave a like and also subscribe and hit the notification bell because every time I upload a new video and you have the notifications on, you'll get notified. So if it's a video you want to see, it'll come up in your notifications so you can go and watch that video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.